G'day and welcome to Claire Downs. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be down here at our farm, Claire Downs, helping out with seeding and getting ready for seeding. So stick with us and see how the other half of the operation is and how the two relate to each other and tie in. It's going to be fun, it's going to be good, and I'm going to be working with my brothers and um, yeah. See in the cab for a bit. So let's see how we go and do some cropping. Right, so good day. Here I am. Uh, I am down at the farm. As you might have guessed, I'm in the boom spray. Now I'm not in the John Deere, I am in the Gold Acres boom. So, uh, I'm running in the Gold Acres. George has just given me a rundown on it. And why I'm down here is because the station's flooded. And uh, there's not much I can actually do up the station at the moment. And George, my brother, is, well, expecting a baby any day now. So. If I'm able to help out down here and achieve nothing up at the station, well, I might as well. So we're doing the knockdown of, well, knockdown one here, preceding. So I'm just using a row that is really just round up nester. So I'm spraying out a canola paddock that's gonna be wheat this year. So it's been um, quite a few years since I've been in a boom spray. And the boom spray we used to have back then was a Miller Nitro. So I'm driving a different system, although that did have a another guidance system on it, which I, I quickly learned. Alright, so yeah learning a, a different boom, different brew up and getting back into this farming thing. Alright, I'll see what angles and stuff I can get as we go and show you the other half of our farming operations. Alright, so I'm up at our north block which is part of the original part of the farm and I've just got to load my screen up to download this paddock which is the yards paddock. So let's go on to that. We got our operation and I'm just gonna change the field. I'm gonna find our yards paddock, yards in South Russells. Okay. Yes, I want to allow auto steer. And I'll change my view to my preferred one, which is a chase cam. Over here, I've got the rate controller, so I've got my tank volume there, 3,298. It's a little bit more than that at the moment because I did a flush last night. I've got my rate cow, so I'm going out at 75 litres per hectare, which gives me around 80 hectares with this full tank, but I've got somewhere around 40 hectares to go. So I'm gonna pop the camera out, fold the boom out, and yeah, you'll get to see that. Now, we have the boom and the tractors all collapsed in so you can transport it without everything being out, dangling and banging, and it's hydraulically controlled. So let's get out there and have a look at this mighty mantis folding out.
So before I get started on the paddock, I run some chemical through the boom, well, because it was flushed clean, and it also gives me an opportunity to prime it up so we are going to be delivering chemical from the start and lets me have a look and see if there's anything like any of the nozzles that are blocked or not performing correctly. I've got one over here. So I'm going to put my glasses on, put my gloves on and have a look at why it's playing up. All right, there's a bit of crap there, you can see, and that'll be some old chemical. So I'll go blow that out, give it a rinse. Same with that one. There we go, more in there. Wow. Morning, Broski. Yeah, because I don't have my head cam. <laughs> That's somewhere at the station. No, cool. Um, yeah, I've started the pump over there, but um, if, for you to brew up, you need an O ring. Um, someone's filled the fire unit up without the O ring being glued in, and it, it'll be in one of the firefighters' tanks. Cool. Uh, well, I've got 40 hectares, so outside lap. Yeah. And I'll be up for a fill. Yeah. What rate are you running at here? I'm at 75. I'm going to drop down to 60. Yeah. So this will be 250 hectares. Paddy. Yeah. So you won't quite get that on the next two tanks. No. Then you roll into the next one. Yeah. So, so I was thinking this then North Russells. Yeah, up to you. I'd be fine, check. Yeah. Have the ruts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But he'll be across here. Is he spraying the moment? Yeah, yeah, he's doing bigger dam. Yeah, so he'll be across here before you'll finish this. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's a race. <laughs> well, it does, doesn't really matter. Um, I'd give him the finish. Yeah, yeah, because he can go slower. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, and other than that, it's just a little bit of watch and all of these. I've been having it with a problem over there, like I'd call it nozzle six and seven yeah. from the red one. You can always grab a paint marker and write some numbers out there. Yeah. So you can uh, sort of see what you Yeah. Right up. Cool. Cool. Yep. Alright, Jasmine, you can do it down on Yeah, yeah, no, no, they're fine. Yep. Um, and yes, we did turn, we did cancel the internet in town. <laughs> yeah, I figured that's what happened. Yeah, and so we're just going to um, unzip Jasmine's car internet, put it on the pergola. And yeah. 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 I love the way Mum can try on it. It's owned by a foreign company. Starlink. Starlink. <laughs> Okay, so I rinsed them down, then I blew them out with the air and I'm gonna put my gloves in the bin and wash my hands before getting in the cab. Then we should be underway.
Okay, so I've just um, cleaned up another blocked nozzle. It's one that I've been having a few issues with for a little while. But I figured while I'm uh, here in the boom spray, I might as well run through a couple of things like why I'm down here at the farm, but also how they all tie in together. So let's keep on going on this outside lap. So I'm in the Gold Acres Crop Cruiser Boom Spray, which is our older one. So it's a self-propelled boom spray. That means that it doesn't have to be towed behind a, another machine or implement. And so it's got its own engine and drive system. This machine is only for spraying the crops or like I'm doing now, spraying out weeds. So this is part of the pre-seeding operation, which is to make sure that we don't have any germination from a little bit of rain we've had, which means that that would be taking up useful moisture in the soil. It's kind of like preserving the moisture in the soil, like we preserve the moisture that we, you know, the water for the camels. You know, the camels are a weed on the station and the volunteer crop that I'm spraying at the moment is canola and that's now a weed because this paddock is going to be going into wheat next, well, this season. So little green things you can see out there mostly are little bits of canola. So what happened was we had around 25, 30 mils of rain up at the station and before the roads got closed, Jasmine and I traveled down to Perth so that we could have a little bit of a break and go to some medical appointments. Then because we had a further lot of rain and that ended up totaling 214 mils of rain, which is um, quite a bit of rain for us up there. The roads have been closed and I'll attach some photos of some of the, you know, road conditions up there, but there's a loader there that's stuck completely down to the axle. And that's on the road that we need to use to get out to the station. So those roads are closed. The ones out towards Waluna are a little bit better engineered and those roads are back in action. Um, so we decided that since my brother George is expecting a, a little one any day now, I would come down and help out on the farm for seeding, pre-seeding, that sort of stuff because up at the station, I'm not going to be doing much up there in terms of economic return. But it's going to be a good opportunity to work with my brothers directly. And we've got a bit of cattle work that we can do down here. So you're not going to miss out on the cows. And you might have seen them earlier in the pasture paddock there. And yeah, the other thing is that the girls are in a real school for the last two weeks of term. So they're going to be going to school in Esperance and Jasmine's in town as well. So we'll see how they like it. And yeah, it'll be a good experience for the girls to go to a real classroom for, yeah, for the first time really, other than when they have school camps. So it'll be nice to see how they respond to that structure and different environment. And if um, we get a phone call from the school asking about the kids, do they really go out shooting camels? So I'll check in with you throughout the day, like when we go and brew up, which is gonna be in 1500 liters and yeah, we'll see how Jack out the back goes with Jack near the coast because in the mornings I am only a few hundred metres from the beach and here at the paddock I'm only you know, in the tens of kilometres from the ocean. So thanks for tuning in and don't forget that 
you know, there is merch available. We do have hats, caps, and stickers available through Adam's website, uh, A&M Colour and Corrections and Signage. But we are looking at getting onto some of the original orange caps, and they're gonna be uh, a couple of months away before I've got those in store. So, yeah, hang around, check out the merch if you want to, and I'll get onto more of this farm stuff. Cheers. Okay, so I'm set up here. I've just finished out that tank there in the yard paddock and I've got to brew up. Now I'm changing my water rate from, call it training rates. So I've, well, I went from 100 litres a hectare, which allowed me to go slower, to 75 litres per hectare. Now I'm going to drop down to 60 litres per hectare, which will give me a 100 hectare brew. So I need to calculate or, you know, do my rates accordingly. So I'll just be a second on that and I'll tell you the rates. Alright so I'm doing 1.2 litres a hectare of Roundup and I'm doing half a litre per hectare of Ester. So my brew is pretty simple, it's two bags of Amsol, 12 litres of Orca or Li700 surfacent, adjuvant, whatever you want to use the term, and then yeah half a litre Ester, 1.2 Roundup. So I'm gonna start sucking some water on and get this going. Now, Tom grabbed the O-ring. We we're missing the one from this spray point. We probably not the best spot for me to be filling at. But you can see that this is where we've, um, I've got this puddle here. You might not be able to see the puddle, but that's where the water's been running down and pooling up here. So, yep, that happens. I'm going to get my water on, set to fill the main tank. Now I'm going to start up the pump. Bit of choke, fuel's on. All right, pressure in the line. Now we've got water going into the pump. Turn the fuel pump on, buy the revs up here. So I'm going to put around 3,000 litres of water on before I start pulling in my AMSOL, so my ammonium sulphate. Now the dipper on this is a little bit dicky. So I'm just going to go up and jiggle the wire. Right, so I'm getting there with my leaders coming up, so I'm going to get my Amsol into it while I can. So I've just got to turn this over to my Vortex induction hopper. So this is the pressure delivery side, and that's controlled by the spray pump over there. So the spray pump is on now. I'll pop over there and give you a little bit of a look. So, you end up with the water in there, and I'm delivering water into it. I'm going to tap down here. We use our feet on that one. And away it goes. So, I'm going to get in there and start pouring some Amsol in. Get a bit of water going. Now this is going to be my bin bag up at this spray point. Callum's going to be operating out of here too, so I'll tie it off on the vehicle there. Alright, we've got a bit of water in on that, starting to dissolve it, so I'm just going to open the line up. 
turn that down. All right, I'm going to turn the main delivery line off. Now we're just working off the spray pump and that's circulating this through. Next thing I've got to do is hook up my micromatic and get ready to suck that line in, those other cans in, and pour in my LI700. Okay, 12 litres LI700. That's going to come out of this 110 litre Enviro shuttle. They've got graduated marks out here on the side. So 30, 60, 90, it's my 100, 110. I'm going to just suck it straight down to the 100 mark because that should be around 112. Uh, sorry, that should be around 12 litres. All right, time to turn that on. So I'm flicking over to my Chempro Venturi suction. Now she's on. Not very exciting from there. Hardly exciting from over here, but just watching until I get down to my 100 mark. The other spray micro line that we've got has got a calibrated meter on it. So once Callum's finished down the home block, we might bring that up here just to make our readings a bit more accurate. All right, cool. Give it a quick rinse off the flush line. I run the flush line for about 15 to 20 seconds when I'm using the black line. And I've worked that out by using the clear line. So the next one that I'm going to put in is my Esther, which is currently sitting around the 100 litre mark. So I'm just going to bring her in halfway. So just above the 250 gallon mark. Sorry, 1,000 litre. So I'm 1,900. So yeah, aiming for around the 250 gallon. Venturi on, suction probe on, we're away. Right, so that's going to take a couple of minutes and it's when I get down to the last 20 litres of Roundup that I'll suck the other 3,000 litres on board. I've got 2,000 to go, sorry. I'll suck the other 2,000 litres on when I've got around 80 litres of Roundup on board. So going to turn the camera off now and um, see when I finish. All right, down to the last 20 litres. Just cracked 100, so I've got 20 litres to run on my roundup. So I fired up my delivery pump, suction pump, 4,400 litres. So should suck in at about a good time, let's it all blend up. Right, time to flush this roundup line. Alright, so now that I've disconnected it, I want to roll it. That's going to pull the last of the liquid out of the line. Meaning that it's clear and clean. The next can coming through. Go. Undo my cam lock. Put the line back on the trailer. Right, so I'm just waiting now to get that little bit of foam that's out the top of the, the top of the tank that'll indicate that we're full. And there we are.
Right. So we're full. I'm just going to put my rubbish in the bin, wash my hands and get in the tractor. Radio, that's one brew done and I've got another two tanks to do today. Let's crack on. Yeah, I've got a nozzle out here that's still being annoying. So I'm going to just quickly blow and fix that out. And while I'm out here, I might have a look at what different angle I can um, put on the boom just so we can try something different while we're out here. Radio. That's the one. Now I'm just going to pull the diaphragm open as well. So there's going to be a little bit of pressure in there while I open this up. Diaphragm's pretty clean. Pick up a little bit of straw here. Not nothing in particular in there. I'll blow this out and work out a camera angle. Well, that didn't work well. Okay, so I'm going to grease that tomorrow morning because the grease gun I grabbed is dead. And um, I'll just get the one off the back of Tom's ute before I get cranking tomorrow. So... Yeah, we're just uh, going to call that a day and yeah, let us know what you reckon of seeing the other part of the operation, you know, the, the original part. And um, remember, there is merch and stuff. There's links below. Grab some of that, see what you reckon. And yeah, look forward to showing you more of the operation down here and what really yeah drives drives everything we do. So. Thank you again for joining me on a um, Jack by the Beach, Jack at the Farm, Jack down the back. Or I could just steal John's sign off. Thanks for joining us at Claire Downs Farm. <laughs> uh, right. <clears throat> yeah, I'll see you guys around. And uh, yeah, I should have my computer this week and be able to start editing up some of the other archive footage and give you a lot of up-to-date happenings down here at the farm so thank you for your support and um, yeah give us a thumbs up subscribe if you're enjoying all the varied content and enjoying life out out here in regional remote Australia where we feed the nation and the world thanks